try. But I thought well, India is not cut out for innovation. India is not you no know, innovation. Walk a line. Walk the line. That's it. So I went around. I'm from Father Engel Washi. So I started there. No luck. And then I went around the city. And I said, uh, And guy till I come to Vidya Lankar. So one fine day I did on the July 2nd uh, last year. And I said, okay, I'll go to Vidya Lankar. And then my whole head spun spun around 360 degrees by looking at this campus. And then my brother, obviously Vishwas Deshpande, who runs this, I met him. And there was no looking back after that. I was like, wow, this is America in India. You're really lucky to be here. This is better than America and India, right? Uh, so, in many regards. So, uh, I walked through Vidya Lankar. I ran. I went to the telecom department. I ran into uh, Jagtap sir, and then he said, "Chohan sir here. He's the man you need to talk to." So I came down, but unfortunately that day he was not there. So we wrote a note. Then I get a call. I get called here. Seven eight meetings later, I meet Dr. Patel. And you know how that when you are on a roller coaster and it slowly starts and slowly starts and suddenly quick speed, that's the meeting Dr. Patel. And then we started having meetings and discussions. And I'm sure most of you probably we have seen each other in different classrooms, right? And we had this and today we are launching this great presentation, which I hope you will really enjoy uh, going on forward. So none of this was me, okay? This was the wisdom of the four and the five people uh, that I have in my life, luckily. And uh, I never thought that this can happen in India. It's happening. It's happening better than when I went to uh, different labs in different cities in America that I've led and founded and started. Uh, we didn't have eight different projects to show in the first six months. So I think that deserves a big round of applause. So. So I guess mom, dad, uncle, aunt, and Dr. Yoshi, thank you for pushing me. And uh, one thing that does matter uh, more than innovation is wisdom, right? And you will find that, and I'm finding that myself, right? So, uh, so yeah, um, actually, I would like to facilitate them, felicitate. You know, my English is not that good. Uh, felicitate them. Uh, because it is them who really, um, you know, made today happen, right? So, and you know what the best part is of doing this? Now I'm trying to go back to those schools that said no. And hopefully maybe in a year, Vidya Lankar can lead the way for innovation in other campuses in uh, Bombay and going on forward in India and later on in the world as well. So, uh, yeah, so... Uh, Dr. Akshata Bhatt, uh, my colleague from electronics department, she's getting preparing that. Uh, one anecdote I'll share before we, uh, you know, start the presentation with Akshay uh, Salonke and uh, the other folks. Okay, all right. So, uh, yeah, that is for my folks right there. Um, Dr. Patel, can you help do the honors? Thank you so much. Uh, my mother, Dr. Mehta. Dad, SK Mehta. And then uh, my aunt, uh, Joshna Gupta. My uncle, Arun Gupta. My mom wants to make sure that if her picture is taken, you better make sure you do that. Our program will end tonight if you don't do that. <laughs> you, you, know, uh, his, uh, you, can, you can hide under the first year bandwagon with me, not with them. Yes, you better do that. Yes. The program shall continue. Uh, and uh, also Dr. Joshi, who doesn't want to be 
taking any credit, but the credit does belong to you. So Dr. Joshi, thank you. Yeah. You know, uh, there are so many people that, thank you, Dr. Bhatt. Um, yes, there's so many people here that I just can't even tell you where to start to thank. Uh, you know, uh, our security leaders, please stand. Thank you, sir, for always being there and uh, opening the den for us. And I think I have to confess, we cheated yesterday. And we told that we'll be here till 10 p.m. And they did not know, but our plan was to be here all night. And we stayed here all night and they let us so that we could prepare this for you. Next time we'll prepare better. Thank you, sir, so much. And one thing I do have to add is, sir is a Cargill war veteran. So let's just hear the, yeah. Thank you. So, you know, we often say that because um, they stayed overnight there, so we can stay overnight here. So anyway, um, I think with that, uh, there's a long list. Uh, of, obviously, we thank uh, Executive Director Vishwas Deshpande. We thank Director Milind Talwalkar, uh, uh, you know, for facilitating all this for us, for giving us the space, giving us time, giving us patience, guidance. Uh, you know, we thank uh, Amitok. Uh, we thank Nilesh Deshpande and Pratik sir as well, you know, uh, and obviously our very own Dr. Patel, uh, Dhananjay Patel, uh, Dr. Chauhan, uh, thank you so much as well. And all the faculty from biomedical, from telecommunication, Amul sir, uh, there's a digital innovation lab here. So the ideas that you see here today will go into that lab to become a reality, like prototyping. And then they will go into business plan six months from now. So uh, with that, I would like to now hand it over to the baby corns, the unicorns in the making. Uh, and Akshay Salonke, wherever you are, show up, please. Uh, and I'll give it to him and the rest of the baby corns to take you on a tour of what we call as Conville. Thank you, sir, for this wonderful introduction. So let me ask you, have you ever seen a baby smile? I mean, isn't it wonderful? Like for him, it's just a daily thing. He's he every day he goes like, hey. but for his parents and the people around him, it's wonderful. Similarly, there are, there are like millions of things that are small in nature, but leave a huge impact on our life. That is how Vidyalankar was for me. Let me, story, let me tell you the story of what exactly happened. So I was in my fourth year lectures, intently listening to the professor. And in that moment, my phone vibrated. So I took it out and checked the mail. And the first four words hooked me. Those were entrepreneurship, startups, Dr. Mehta, and Hawaii. USA, Hawaii. Now, if you are a marketing guy, you would use these exact words to hook me in. So I went against my gut and waited for three hours for Sir's seminar. And I'm glad I waited because that even changed my life. This is how Vidyalankar changed my life. But let me tell you a secret on how Vidyalankar is going to change all your lives. So see, there is this idea. This idea to bring together a group of simple individuals like you and me who are hungry enough to do something, something that would help common people with their common problems. Now, let me take you on this journey of what we, where we execute this idea called Conwell. Let me take you on a journey through this, through the eyes of a character that we created, that who is called Dr. D. So Dr. D is sitting in his room with his laptop open on his desk and he gets an email.
is intently looking at the milk, the milk overboils and spills. Now this puts a thought in his mind that if I had switched off the gas at the exact same time from being spilled, can I apply this concept to cancer? Ladies and gentlemen, let me give you our first baby corn non-malignant. In 2020, uh, we all know that the world faced COVID-19 and so did we face cancer. My mom got breast cancer and uh, during her diagnosis at Tata Memorial Hospital, I realized one thing that people are not suffering because of cancer. They are suffering because of late detection of cancer. And there came a thought that even after having millions of advanced medical equipment, 10 million cancer fatalities have occurred in 2020. The question arises, would that number have been same if the doctor had detected the cancer early? The answer is non-malignant. Our aim is towards pre-symptomatic detection of cancer. Among all cancers, our first goal will be breast cancer because it is the leading cause of death in women right now. 6,85,000 women deaths have occurred because of late detection. According to Times of India, 50% of women suffer because of late diagnosis. So. We believe that the best prevention to breast cancer will be early detection. So now the question arises. Now the question arises. How are we all going to do this? We, we will achieve our goal by using genetic analysis, epigenetic analysis and biomarkers. Genetic analysis includes scientific study of genes and heredity of how certain traits or qualities are transferred from your parents to you, which result in DNA changes in DNA sequence in your body. Epigenetics include biomark epigenetics include the study of how your behavior and your environment, which leads to changes in the genes which changes in the genes with how your genes work that actually triggers the cancer cells to activate in your body. Biomarkers. Biomarkers are the fluids or the blood cells which actually gives us the which actually gives us the abnormal processes in your body. Thank you. So our uh, so as we as you saw that these things we are going to study and we are going to make we are going to detect it why this is so important for us is that we have seen what is happening with all the people at the hospital we don't want that happening so we would like to like it's like we would like that all of you to join us on this journey of detecting cancer early so that the world will be cancer free. Thank you. Now, Dr. D has jotted down all his points on a piece of paper and now he's ready to practice. So he stands in front of the mirror. And he looks at the paper and go, he goes m, &M. He goes blah, 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 blah. But the moment he looks into the mirror, he goes blank. Now, let me tell you, poison is an extremely dangerous thing for your brain. Once it touches your surface, your mind goes, your mind corrupts. 
and that is what started happening with dr d but dr d being an innovator and a doctor he started he picked up the phone immediately and contacted his mentor dr t without even saying hi's and hellos he started asking him questions like how were you able to deliver such beautiful lectures that the most uninterested students started paying attention now mr t's answer shocked dr t dr d he said it was about the suit now before dr d could think about anything he uh, dr d dr t continued it was all about the suit i am a very big james bond fan and whenever i wear the suit i feel confident just like engineer students entering into the examination hall i mean they come out crying that is a different story but that is the confident i get and so dr dr d he heard what all he had to say and then kept the phone he started thinking is there any connection between how he dresses up and his confidence levels ladies and gentlemen let me give you your our second baby corn be yourself so before starting so before starting i would like to put a question in front of you all what is style how do you define style style any answer dhananjay sir can you answer exactly the absolutely correct answer like how style and fashion are different see style is timeless and fashion is timely like uh, every person have a different style different style of speaking different style of uh, like dressing different style of walking every person is unique and their styles are uh, and so are their styles so our brand be yourself will help you to design your own style it's a clothing brand so in the upcoming slides i will be telling you that how we are different than other brand brands and uh, what problem we are trying to solving you know every one out of five women are bullied because of their body shapes and almost like more than 65% of girl get their first critic on their body before they turn 14 can you even imagine a little girl 14 years old girl like uh, at that age like many girls don't even hit their puberty this may cause like uh, this may lead to anxiety and depression don't you think so is it fair like uh, bullying a 14 years old girl for their uh, for her body shape not right See, if you are not confident enough, then it will affect your mood, behavior, activities, gesture, which is like uh, your body language, work, which are enough to spoil your day. So, what is the psychology behind clothing? Ah, uh, this is a research sheet. Ah, uh, I'll ah uh, like I'll tell you in short, ah, uh, very shortly. Whatever color you are wearing, whatever style you are wearing, it defines you. It describes you. like uh, what is uh, your style uh, describes your nature whatever color you are wearing it can define like what you are feeling today if you are wearing blue if you are wearing red it will affect your mood or uh, we can say that your like uh, your choices your nature so from here our main slide starts this is cherry and she is searching for an outfit she is facing this difficulty in buying a, like uh, in buying an outfit can you help her so here are her inches so cherry's burst inches are 36 cherry's uh, waist inches is 26 
26 and Cherry's hip inches are 37. What do you think? In which category she should buy? Like small, medium or large? Any answer? See, this is the problem that not only Cherry is facing, this is the problem that many women are facing. This is the problem that I have faced many times. So we are trying to solve this problem. We end up comparing ourselves, uh, why I'm not as beautiful as her, why I'm not thicker like her, why I'm not thinner like her, why I don't have curves like her, why I don't have hairs like her. We just don't be ourselves. We try to be someone who we are not. Don't you think so? So that we do uh, while buying clothes, we end up buying something which is not made for us. We end up buying wrong size clothes. Can you guess like what percentage of women are wearing wrong size clothes? Any guesses? It's 80%. Absolutely correct. Like almost 80% of women are wearing wrong size clothes. So there is a staggering number of women, like 80% of women are wearing wrong size, women are wearing wrong size, uh, size, uh, size clothes. Uh, why do you think this happens? Firstly, due to uneven body structure, that is, uh, are, uh, in women only uh, alone, there are namely five types of body shapes that, that are hourglass, pear, invert, inverted triangle, rectangle, apple. So some brand doesn't understand uh, like this problem. One size doesn't fit all and generalized sizes are the big issue. As we have seen in the previous slide that how Cher uh, Cherry faced difficulty in buying clothes and uh, same problem we, we also face. Plus size women end up buying some uh, like very tight clothes in which she uh, she is not comfortable in order to look fit or uh, slim. And underweight women with a non-curvy body she ended up buying something baggy, like baggy t-shirts, oversized uh, jeans or track pants in order to hide their non-curvy body. So this is uh, this slide explains that how uh, your clothes affect your lifestyle. If you're wearing something good, like uh, with a perfect fitting, this will affect your comfort zone. You, uh, you will get into your comfort zone. You will feel more comfortable. And ultimately, you will be more confident. And uh, do you know, your clothes affect your dopamine level. Dopamine is a feel-good hormone. Yes, and it is scientifically proven. Whatever you are wearing, if you're wearing something good, it will affect your dopamine level. Your dopamine level will increase. So better mood, better lifestyle. If you and your body shapes are different, unique, then why your clothes aren't? So... What we will be doing, we will provide you customized clothes. We will help you to design your own style, whatever color, fabric, pattern you like, uh, whatever your inches are. We will help you to achieve the clothes that fits you the best, that suits you the best. Style for the leading lady in you, get the clothes that will talk on your behalf. Vision of our brand. Our brand will add more comfort and confidence in your life you will feel the distinctiveness. Mission, every woman should be confident. Values, your clothes are your definition and we will help you to define yourself well. We will help you to be the best version of yourself. Thank you. Now, Dr. D, he's all suited up and he has his lecture notes. Now, as he is moving towards his uh, college, he remembers that it is a, like a boring route towards his college. But there is only one thing that interests him, and that is a hospital he drives nearby. So that day, as he as he was driving by, with this with a with a at a corner of his ear, he hears this woman saying, "Sorry, sir, I can't. It's just not possible." So Dr. D went up to the woman and started asking this nurse to explain her, him the situation. And the nurse says, sorry, sir, so, doctor, I cannot treat, I cannot give emergency medical assistance to this woman because 
she does not have her file. So we do not have her medical data. So doctor being a doctor arranged something for the woman and started dri driving towards his college. Now, as he was going towards his college, he started thinking, is it fair not to treat a person only because their medical data is not available at that particular moment of time that they don't have their physical file with them? So, ladies and gentlemen, I give you another baby corn of ours, Savior. So, illness and recovery is a part and parcel of life. In 2016, I saw my grandmother in an ICU bed. She was on ventilator. A pipe was stuck down through her throat, making her throat completely thirsty. She repeatedly kept asking for water, but was denied. This painful sight stuck in my mind for the rest of my life. It made me wonder why our medication can't be less painful and more improvised. In 2020, this thought was triggered when the COVID pandemic hit us. COVID, isn't, COVID was an infection which, was, which, still not, which still does not have a proper cure. Doctors treated on the purely basis of symptoms every, uh, and these symptoms varied from person to person depending upon their physique and their healthcare and their medical history. Most of these patients failed to produce their uh, medical history to the emergency healthcare services which led in fatal results. So this made me realize and substantial improvement must be done in our country to foreign emergency healthcare services to improve our patient care. When I joined Vidya Lankar, it was a matter of luck that my thought just got one step closer into becoming a reality. Here, at my, here I met my buddy, my mentor, Dr. Anil Mehta. He's a simply dressed man filled with dashing ideas with a super, super innovative mindset. This is a great place for innovation. Here I met my colleague, my friend Fatima. She, she also shared the same thought with me. She also felt an improvement in uh, urgent improvement of medical healthcare services must be done in our country. So we started working together and came up with a solution, Savior. Savior is an intelligent response database. Savior does not only aim, Savior is not just a platform which is a database or which stores health services. We aim, it is our dream to make electric emergency health services completely hassle-free. It has been about 75 years of India's independence. From a developing country, India has turned to a country which has the vastest growing economy. But the question is, are we really putting efforts in implementing our healthcare sector? Can we achieve the dream of making a good country without healthy citizens. Now, this question has been brutally answered by the COVID-19 situation about which my partner just discussed. So this needs someone to take initiatives in managing our healthcare sector. Now, Savior will be taking that initiative. Savior will be storing data of about 140 crore Indian citizens in, Savia will be storing medical data of about 140 crore Indian citizens, which can be easily accessed by any doctor, basically the authorized personnel during emergency situations. Easily they can log into the system, access the data, and go on for the further prognosis of the patients. Savia will be providing with the most accurate data immediately, and also we will be aiming to replace the paperwork system. We live in the 21st century. Everything we do is available right at our fingertips. From booking hotels, booking restaurants, eating food, buying clothes, everything is available right at our fingertips. So why not we give access to doctors for of a medical data right at their fingertips so that they can go on with treating their patients effectively and efficiently. Concept of EHR is not new. It has been early, early implemented in USA in 2008. But USA is an example how implementation should not be done. 
before investing in healthcare, there should be a proper planning and proper presentation of the model. The problem was EHR was they did not care about the patient care. Mostly they, they, were, they were made for database for and for billing purposes. So according to a study from John Hopkins, more than half a million people were known to die from human errors in recorded medical history, system failure, and many diagnostic errors, making it the third leading cause of death in USA. So the, as you can see in the graph, this was based on the, this, uh, this graph was, uh, this survey was conducted on 10,000 people and 21%, that is 2,100 people noticed an error in their EHR. This little errors can be fatal uh, during an treatment or during and treatment of a patient. As you can see, there's an example of a 13 year old girl who was severely allergic to dairy, but was given a probiotic containing milk, milk product. This resulted into respiratory, respiratory, complete respiratory distress, making a lungs collapse. I would also like to give you an example of a 79-year-old man named Karan Singh, almost the age of my grandfather. He was facing cancer and he was complaining about his 11 years of distressful journey of cancer. He had to take his bundles of files, run here and there with those files. That thought came in his head. What if there was a digital system that stored all of my data? I would just simply have to go to a doctor, sit there, and he would have access to all of my data. It wouldn't be such a hassle for me. So, Savior will be having a great impact on life of people like Karan Singh and Brookie. We are aiming to achieve the accuracy in the digital system, which has never been achieved up till now in India. Why not trust the system, have a little faith in the technology, and then bear the fruits? Israel is a small country, which is a perfect example of how EHR implementation should be done. They have Their hospitals have been paperless for more than 20 years. This is an example how India should look look towards an EHR. EHR is a new concept in India, which is still growing and it should be done perfectly. So with the help of Savior, availability of patient medical record in the emergency department will significantly increase the patient care. Thank you. And this, okay. so with Savior, by building Savior, we aim to make our India number one in the healthcare services. So Savior in India coming soon. Stay tuned. Thank you. Thank you. So now Dr. D reaches his college and he nails his lecture. But as he was returning home, he remembers that while he was giving his lecture, he could hear some funky background music playing, uh, funky music playing in the background. He, he thinks it was some of his students who bunked the lecture. So he started thinking like, is it possible for anybody to get a private space so they can sort of do their stuff in a public space. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you our next baby corn out of sync. I would like to start my presentation by asking you one simple question. How many times were you silenced for being too loud, for being yourself? How many times did you worry that someone might eavesdrop on your private conversation? In this age of smartphones, it has become very difficult to keep your private conversations private. Here is out of sync, keeping you, keeping those pesky years away. One fine day, me and my friends were sipping on a nice cup of coffee and working on a project in a very crowded Starbucks. That's when we overheard a couple exchanging OTPs louder than it should have been. The lady at the next table took advantage of the situation and got a nice payday out of it. And the poor couple, on the other hand, incurred a huge financial loss. With so much chitter chatter in the background, we were frustrated and just wanted a quiet space to work in. 
this made us wonder how many people in the world face the same problem as we are turns out 37% of the smartphone owners are affected by eavesdropping and phishing 81% of data breaches happen due to poor management of passwords and the average financial losses round up to 229 million dollars i wonder how it may affect people mentally and medically turns out this number is pretty huge 6 to 20% of people suffer from misophonia in which normally ignorable sounds like babies crying or dogs barking which other people can ignore they can't ignore anymore 1.3% of people suffer from agoraphobia the fear of going out and they have this fear because they are reminded of the fact that people will invade their personal space at all times here is some data regarding all these fears and mental problems that might happen because of noises and the number that can, that we can see 39.6% of people are having social anxiety constantly generalist anxiety is 36.2% and most importantly 12% of people have panic attacks constantly just because of noises and this is not a problem that just your normal people have or a specific group of people have this can be faced by your regular ben in this chess money or the daughter of the famous british singer ozzy osbourne kelly osbourne now it's not just about mental problems that noises have it's also the medical problems that noises have just an increase of 5 decibels can increase your chances of ha having a heart attack by 36% this is scary now our question was even after so many advancements of technology why should we live a life like this why not have control over our own privacies why not take charge of our own privacies what if we had a device wherein if we could switch it on there would be a soundproof bubble anywhere we want this is where the idea of out of sync comes into place out of sync is a device which will create a soundproof bubble using the active noise cancellation technologies which are existing and are used in noise cancelling headphones and the best part is we can use this anywhere and any time that we want be it cafes be it public transports shopping malls or hospitals so join us in this mission of keep of keeping those pesky ears away with out of sync Thank you so much. Now, Doctor D has had both an exciting but a very tiring day. So the moment he comes home, he jumps straight into his bed. But as he starts started to sleep, he gets this. 12 a.m. creative thoughts so he gets up and started to imagine starts to imagine like that am i the only one who gets these thoughts do do how do other crea creative people cope up with this ladies and gentlemen for that i give you our next baby corn anesia Have you ever seen your grandmother or your mother sleeping soundly for a short moment of time or getting up numerous times in the middle of the night and getting up again in the early morning well i have seen my grandmother facing her medical issues very diligently but still facing these symptoms 
from a very long duration. So I, so I started researching about it. And I found out that, that these symptoms are about a sleep disorder called as insomnia. This insomnia is a very common sleep disorder. So then I started wondering that are the senior citizens only affected by this issue? But the answer to this question was no. Just not the senior citizens, but also the middle age group of the population as well as the college students are also affected by this issue. What is the count of this problem? The count is about 237 million of the world's population. That is about 10 to 30 percent of the global population is affected by insomnia on daily basis. And it is as high as 50 to 60 percent in some nations. It is a vicious cycle, starting from the sleep issues and getting to the hyper arousal. As you can see on the slide, which, is, uh, which shows the comic example that even though you want to sleep, but you're not able to sleep just because your mind is not letting you to sleep, which starts inducing stress and the anxiety, which gives rise to insomnia. What are the causes behind this? The one which tops the list is the excessive caffeine intake. Then there can be the daily medication intake, then the financial concerns, then different problems or such as the Ten, uh, such as the tendency to keep off, uh, keep on overthinking or negative thinking. So this starts uh, to give rise to insomnia. This insomnia can cause you to several other causes and reasons, uh, problems such as the depression disorder or the anxiety disorder, even the heart diseases or the uh, blood pressure problems. So 70% of the creative minds are facing some sort of mental illness in their job, resulting into insomnia, which is reducing their productivity. And you know what? Uh, people about the age of 60, which means the senior citizen, uh, about 48% of the global population of senior citizens are affected by insomnia on daily basis and for a longer duration. I don't want my grandmother to keep uh, facing this problem anymore. I want my grandmother to sleep better. This, can be uh, this initiative can be started with the help of Panacea by first starting to treat the acute insomnia, which is the initial phase of insomnia. By treating this acute insomnia with the help of non-medicative treatment, which will be provided by Panacea. You might be wondering that what is the meaning of Panacea? Panacea, which means something that can heal or ca that can give the cure to an illness. So panacea, the main motive of panacea is to sleep better. So this can be started by first identifying your insomnia level, then by providing the CBTI technique, which stands for the cognitive behavioral therapy, which is basically a talk therapy, which has been proven to be more effective than the sleeping pills for a longer duration. Then it gives the meditations for specific reasons such as the stress and the anxiety, which is the root cause of insomnia. And then I would like to conduct an activity. Kindly close your eyes. All the audience, kindly close your eyes and start thinking about something positive that happened in your life. Kindly open your eyes. Okay. So now close your eyes again. Start thinking about something that positive that happened in your life. Open your eyes. How did that feel? I hope this made a bit of a change while you were thinking about something positive that happened in your life. 
and this is the fourth thing which will be implemented by panacea which is called as the music therapy thank you so much now using panacea dr d was finally able to fall asleep but when he wakes up he realizes that he is sleeping on a beach and a blind man made up made up of black vegetables is walking past him now you must be wondering how he come how he came to be on a beach so to explain that ladies and gentlemen let me pro give you another two of our baby corns not harvest and vision hello so i am a ngo volunteer and i love this work so much whenever i go there i see a happy little cute faces and excited people because of me so i was working there in the adoption center and i saw a girl who was sitting in the corner and she was disappointed i don't know why i asked someone about her they told she is arna a girl with no parents no family no friends no vision and i decided that i should help her i should do something to make her happy so here presents you the vision vision will help 2.2 billion visually impaired people to see this world in the better way what one what food quality one eats will one produce my uh, my question is to you all my first question is if a farmer is earning 2 rupees profit by selling his vegetable his products and a vendor who is selling a vada pav in mumbai is also earning 2 rupees profit in it but the whole middle process is just earning 40 rupees do you think this is right my second question is the person if you are comfortable with organic food you will buy it but do you know is it authentic what chemicals they are put in it no right i i introduce you to my app harvest thank you and then dr d suddenly wakes up he realizes that it was a dream so that's it ladies and gentlemen we'll be back i'll be back in a few i'll be back in a few months with convil 2.0 but now you must be wondering who i am and why i'm coming the, uh, between all these presentations and telling you this story because that is what we do this is what is tell the tale all about uh, we are a storytelling company we tell stories to inspire people to you know allow them to bring out their story uh, their failures their successes so this is tell the tale signing off over to you anil sir thank you so much akshay and all the baby cons for uh for this very innovative trip to conwell hope you enjoyed it uh just to give you an idea of what next will come uh i'd like to invite one of our senior students who has been building his startup company for the last few months so i'd like to invite altamish khan uh please come on stage uh, altamish has been working on an app and uh, i'm sure everybody uh, eats bread uh in the audience we all do and uh, what altamish did was take a unorganized sector and organize it or attempt to organize it so 
uh, he has already gone to the next step, what we call as proof of concept. Uh, so what you saw today was ideation, ideas. What you will see uh, going on in the future is uh, actual products that will be built. So hopefully in the next, uh, and we will tell you uh, very shortly the date when we'll be presenting the next uh, ideas and products. So uh, Ultimesh actually already has a website for this, an app as well. So um, he's going to open the app and open the website and walk us through uh, the next steps for a couple of minutes. And then hopefully in the next uh, few months, then we will be doing this with the other baby cons as well and take you to a, another tour of Conwell, uh, more exciting and more fun. And not only that, we want to present this to you as uh, an audience. We want your feedback as well. Uh, unicorns are not built by, uh, just like kids are not raised by two parents, it's a village. Unicorn is also built by a whole village. So all the feedback, all the wisdom that we can possibly get is welcome. Uh, these folks will take it very positively and, you know, continue to build. So this is not a one-off three, three months, once in three months meeting. We would love for you to join our WhatsApp groups. We would love for you to join our uh, Instagram feeds, YouTube feeds, and also on our email list. Um, if you have to just pick up the phone call and any ideas you have to improve any of these baby cons is tremendously welcome. Okay. So uh, I will actually steal this time that I have while we struggle with troubles of the 80s. Actually, I, you know, I used, to, I used to remember in our house, uh, we have a conwell called Vikram Jyoti, you know, everything there where we live, everything there is uh, unique and uh, awesome. So, but in the 90s, we still remember this internet access. I don't know how many of you were around in the 90s. Oh, Lord, nobody. Uh, none of the baby cons, at least. Um, oldest is 2001. What happened? You flunked one year in school. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, yeah, 2001 does not know about dial up modem. You know about dial up modem? You know about dial up modem? How? Which part of India did you live in 2001? That was my instinctive question, but. Aha, late to, uh, you know, get on it. But uh, yeah, so if you remember dialing and that tone, I wish I could do it, that doo -doo -doo -doo, and then once it connects, that feeling you get, and as my father puts it, the feeling you get once you get your gas bill paid in India in the 80s is like a Nobel Prize. And that's the feeling we would get. Oh, we connected. Oh, my God. So, uh, you know, uh, that, is, that is the struggle we had back in the day. Uh, but now it's internet has evolved so much and there's so much innovation going on just in that space and so many apps that you folks are talking about that can be built in that space. What I want to do is uh, I want to take a small opportunity because you have this window here while Altamesh is trying to figure out, uh, oh, it is here. The, yeah, and that makes me hungry. This website makes me hungry. Altamesh, can I get like four breads and uh, some cheese delivered to my house? Oh, sure. Thank you so much. But before, uh, after Altamesh presents, uh, I'd like to call Dr. Patel on stage uh, as well. And we're just going to talk about the next few steps real quick. So this is an example of how, uh, you know, the baby guns would, be, would grow in the next two to three months. Uh, but I'll give it to you, Altamesh. Just, just, uh, yeah, I मैंने ब्रेड वाले के साथ स्टार्ट किया था मोस्ट ऑफ दी सोसाइटी में ब्रेड वाले आते हैं जो मतलब बहुत पहचान के रहते थोड़ी गुजराती सोसाइटी में अलाउड नहीं रहते लेकिन मोस्ट ऑफ दी सोसाइटी में ब्रेड वाले ब्रेड मिल्क एवरीथिंग लेके आते तो फिर मैंने एक वेबसाइट से इनिशिएटिव किया था कि उनसे ऑर्डर करना रहे तो एक अनऑर्गेनाइज्ड वे में थे उनको एक ऑर्गेनाइज प्लेटफार्म दिया उसके जब मैंने स्टार्ट किया था तो लाफिंग काउ कंपनी के साथ कोलैबोरेशन करके हम काम कर रहे थे उनकी चीज भी जाती थी तो ऐसा करके उधर से मतलब इधर से लॉगिन नहीं है वो स्विच किए ना उधर से 
तो इसमें मतलब सब्सक्रिप्शन मेटर्ड भी अभी ऐड किया हो न्यू सब्सक्रिप्शन मेटर मतलब आपको जो डेली प्रोडक्ट लगता है या वो अल्टरनेटिव डेज में लगता है या थ्री डेज में लगता है तो सब्सक्रिप्शन मेथड है एक बार बुक कर देने से मंथली पूरा होगा तो ऑल ओवर मैंने सर्च किया हो सिक्स थाउजेंड बेड वाले है जो टेन लैख हाउसेस में डेली जाते वन डे मतलब ऐसा अप्रोक्सीमेशन टेन लैख हाउसेस में जाते हैं तो अभी सर के वहां पे एक ब्रेड वाला है तो उनके फिफ्टी टू फोर्टी ब्रेड वाले जिनके साथ अभी मैं इनिशिएटिव करने वाला हूँ सर के साथ नेक्स्ट स्टेप में आपके वही है जो खान करके ब्रेड वाला है साजिद खान करके उनकी कलीग्स भी उधर ही है चेंबूर में तो अभी उनके साथ लास्ट प्रोडक्शन मास लेवल पे अभी ये दो तीन ब्रेड वाले के साथ ही काम कर रहा था मैं तो वन थाउजेंड कस्टमर डेली इस पे एक्टिव है अभी so how was the session vit awesome did you like all the ideas research ideas yes do you think uh, that they were really uh, innovative ideas do you feel yes or no yes okay so any kind of uh, feedback is most valuable to us and uh, we'll be very grateful if we receive any critics because that will help us to uh, move on to our second part of mission unicorn so in the first part of mission unicorn we had uh, a lot of student teams coming into uh, a group and we uh, like so based on some criteria we selected certain of the teams and those of the teams have presented here now we'll try to move on to the second part uh, of the mission unicorn and that is the research and actually making the product okay so what we have seen over here in the presentation is like the idea all right uh, the ideation phase like every student was discussing that this is the problem these are the statistics and this is what uh, they want to do okay but in next like next 3 to 6 months we will come up with another round of mission unicorn where our students participants the innovators basically they will try to show uh how they have developed this particular uh, ideation into a product okay so that is our second stage now so we'll be starting with a research phase we'll be trying to involve the electronics uh communication technologies the softwares which are required uh we'll educate our students for this and we'll move on to the second part of mission unicorn um if you have any feedback uh it will be great uh, if you receive any feedback from or uh, the dignitaries over here and that will really help us to shape the students for the next round i would like to personally thank uh, the management of vidya lanka institute of technology uh, vishwas deshpande sir uh, milin talwarkar sir the director and uh, saurabh mehta sir over here for his constant guidance and support and uh, they have really helped us in all the matter we can push mission unicorn in a positive direction further a special thanks to the person who is right now not present in the auditorium dr anil mehta without which mission unicorn would not have been like uh, taken off like we have not be on this particular stage right now so have a round of applause for all these people who have contributed uh, in mission unicorn last but not the least the one who innovates right my students my first year students my final year students and maybe the second and third year students also uh those who are the part of this mission unicorn we are very thankful to you all guys for being today and the presentation was excellent i was really happy the way uh, it started with the story and every team was introduced uh, the way they presented was amazing and thank you very much for being over here thanks a lot
Well, I, I'm greatly impressed by the way people got the ideas and how they present it. I only want to say that this opportunity given by Vidyar Lenka to my son, Anil, and other, all of you is something unique. Unique in the sense that you are now thinking very differently than what a student in other colleges are thinking about them. And the, uh, if the country has to go ahead, it is the, the unique thinking which is always important in that one day. One observation I want to make, I, I when I was doing my postgraduate in, from Rurki, one of the professors, he said, in the research, there is nothing like failure. You have a particular technique, you don't succeed, then you learn that this technique is not good. There's something else to be done. That's one there. It raises your curiosity to do something differently. That's one there. And in all your problems, what you do, there are two aspects of this one there. That is, what is this and how is it this? That is easy to do that one. But the main thing is why. Once you know the why of a particular thing that one, you go into the fundamentals of the whole thing that one. You should take a refrigerator, let us say, and if you told that if you press this button that this will work and all the things that one did. But if you know the principles of a refrigerator, how it works, what kind of thing it goes, what kind of the gas is required, what is all set with that one, what is the, uh, how the temperature control comes and all the things that one, you learn much more, more and you extend the whole thing that one day. So the other uh, fundamental situation is that you know how, what, but at the same time try to find why of this particular thing that one. You can find a why, then you are your basics are much stronger than that. Now I wish to thank the Vanje and the Telanka and that one. I am happy to come here and I say to Anil, you have made us proud today. Thank you. Good morning. car thing